This is Unserious. Hello, listeners. Unserious producer and co-founder Mike Avono here with Upshots, a short version of Unserious to kick off your week with one quick idea that you can put to use today. In case you missed it, our flagship Unserious podcast, which is longer form, it comes out on Thursdays, just wrapped its second season. You can hear JB and Molly and I reminisce and recap our favorite moments in the season two wrap up from last week, but I'll still be here on Mondays to help you get ready for the week. Our guest today is Andrew J. Coate, a marketing leader who works across tech, nonprofits, music, and events at places like Coinbase, Facebook, and the Sims Foundation. Welcome, Coate. I'm going to call you Coate. Yeah. Because that's how I know you. (laughs) What insights are you sharing today? We will be talking about navigating ambiguity. So this is for people who struggle with change or uncertainty, maybe folks who freeze uh, when patterns are disrupted or, you know, aren't sure how to continue working when, say, there's like a pending reorg or a new boss or just some some change to their status quo. Mm-hmm. I, I think I have the point of view that ambiguity is actually the status quo, that, mm. that we live more in that than we do the, the known. And so being comfortable with that is is important for that reason. Hmm. What are some other examples of ambiguity in everyday life? So, you know, it could be just uh, you got a text message from a friend that says, hey, can we can we have a chat or, uh, <laughs> you know, your, your schedule suddenly is disrupted because, you know, something happened and you're not really sure how you're going to go about the day. Let alone the really big stuff like who's my life partner? What will my next job be? Yeah, I think when it comes to the workplace, you mentioned some of the places I've worked. Reorgs were almost a constant. <laughs> it's almost, <laughs> <No>. yeah, <laughs> you, need, you needed to know that, you know, who you're working with now you might not be working with the next half yeah yeah okay this all makes sense but let's put a really fine point on it why is being able to navigate ambiguity important well if we aren't able to i mean you become paralyzed from moving forward Mm -hmm. um i think maybe even bigger than that you miss opportunity there there's something that you know might be coming your way that you're just you're you're just so focused on, you know, what could happen that might be negative that you're missing out what what could happen that could be positive. And and also like the more you sit in ambiguity, the more your mind has time to to race and the more stressed (laughs) and anxious you become. Yeah. Okay. So what's your approach to navigating ambiguity in your life? I actually think about it more like embracing ambiguity than Hmm. navigating ambiguity. So one of the ways that I do that and I think is helpful in any moment of stress is is checking in with your body. Uh, I I think the body tells you what's going on with you before anything else, right? (laughs) You know, check in. Is this in your head? Is it in your heart? Like, uh, I think that there is hope in acknowledging and saying, yes, I understand that I'm afraid. And I understand, you know, mind, shoulders, whatever. I understand what you're trying to tell me, that, that you're afraid and you're anxious. I think the next piece is focusing on what is within your control in order to stay in motion. So the truth is, within any moment of ambiguity or or change, there is something that you can anchor to. There is some constant. Hmm. I think that there is another part of this. And I'm going to paraphrase a friend of mine, Joey Dolan, who talks about not just focusing on the knowns, but focusing on who else knows. So Hmm. we may not collectively have all the pieces, but maybe there's another leader in your org or another teammate Not necessarily that like knows more than you, but maybe has faced this kind of circumstance before or maybe has a a project that can continue to keep your project moving and you can combine them or just examples like that. So finding strength in in community. The final piece for me, if you've ever worked with me, you've heard me say the phrase zoom out. (laughs) When you do that in a moment uh, like this, where you're faced with ambiguity, the likelihood that this new unknown shares characteristics or patterns with an unknown you've already faced is extremely high. And I think when you zoom out, particularly in business, uh, things are cyclical. Yeah, uh, We deprecate products and then later we realize, oh, we need a, something to fill this <laughs> gap. Uh, yep. And we bring the same product back with a different title or something like that. So I think you can kind of look back and say, oh, this change is probably going to shake out like these other changes have. Uh, What I'm hearing there is drawing confidence from some of those past times where like, you know, I went through that one hard thing and I got through, I could do this again. Or drawing on the courage from others, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. I I love that you pulled confidence out of that because I I I do really think the fear and the anxiety can start to tell us things like, you're not going to be able to handle what's coming. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, this is really good stuff. I want to recap this a little bit, but I gotta, if you'll indulge me for a second, as you were walking through this, I had this sort of mental picture of like, imagine you have fallen into the ocean somehow, right? Maybe the shipwreck situation or whatever. You try to get your bearings. You look around. You do not know which direction is which. You don't know where to go. Super ambiguous. The waves are crashing. You know, are there sharks? Uh, what do you do? First thing is probably like you got to you got to check in with yourself. You got to get that anxiety down. Start to focus on what you know. Like maybe you see some parts of the wreckage and you can go grab onto them. You know, you find that one thing that you can hold on to. So you're focusing on what you do know because there is so much in this situation that you don't know. And now imagine it's been a day or two. You're kind of shifting from that fight or flight mode to like a slower pace. What you hear in those survival stories is like that uh, mental gymnastics of keeping your mind in check. And the only option is like, yeah, I am going to get out of this. And you have to find confidence somewhere, whether it's in yourself or knowing that other people have been in these situations and they got out too. I mean, that just happened to me. So that's a perfect example. You fell off a ship? Yeah. What? <laughs> Last Tuesday. <laughs> I never know if you're joking or not. And you never will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are other, some other pitfalls to avoid when em- embracing uh, ambiguity, as you say? Overthinking and overanalyzing. Look at your circumstances, find patterns, find commonality, mm-hmm. find people. So there's some action in there. But there are diminishing returns. So to use the in, in the ocean analogy, focus on either staying afloat or swimming in one direction at this moment in time. Don't worry about, I also have to stay afloat. Also, are there sharks? Also, is this is it going to start raining? Um, I think the other thing is uh, you need to check in with your mood regularly. So are you approaching this coming change, whatever it is, with pessimism and fear and anger? Well, if that's the case, if that's the predominant mood every time you check in, Mm -hmm. then, you know, how are you going to recognize the potential good? This is extremely hard in the modern era of deadlines getting faster and faster. But, you know, having a little bit of patience here and and, and saying, look, you know, we don't know the answer today, but we will know the answer at some point in the future. Yeah, that makes sense. Else, It sounds really reactive, just waiting for the ball to come to you. Exactly. And I think what we're talking about here is more generally looking at what is in your control and being able to focus on that. And are there any pro tips here? Yeah. Look at ambiguity as a chance to gain instead of a chance to lose. So see it as an opportunity. When things are uncertain, you have the opportunity to provide some certainty for yourself or for other people. When nobody knows what's going on, nobody knows what's going on. So what (laughs) you're doing isn't really like out of sorts or anything like that. These kind of moments when things are unsettled are the best opportunity to grow, to test, to learn, to stretch yourself, to figure out something new, to try things. Okay. I could not agree with you more. My advice to people in the, what if I get laid off situation is to do just what you said, like go, go fucking crazy. Yeah. Like if you're not sure if you have another 30 or 60 days ahead of you, try stuff. What bullet points do you want to have on your resume before you go? And now is the time to try it because the rules have changed. Yeah, I love that. When nobody knows what's going on, that's yeah. an opportunity to to do something because nobody knows anyway. So what's the what's the harm in trying? Yeah, it's a lot more self empowering. You can connect with Coat on LinkedIn or follow Andrew J Coat on Instagram for dog pics and photography, unless you just want the dogs. And then go to Maggie and Scooch on Instagram. And there's a link to the cheat sheet for this episode in the show notes and at our website on Sirius.com. This podcast is brought to you by Unserious Group. We're a communications and strategic consulting practice that helps companies and leaders navigate the rapidly changing workplace by lowering the stakes and working more efficiently, playfully, and creatively. At Unserious, we make work play.